<clears throat> welcome back guys and uh, now we are going to discuss about the <clears throat> incident investigation recording reporting that in case if we are having any kind of incident wh what do we have to first of all we have to investigate it why do we investigate it we will be learning about it then we have to record it <clears throat> investigation needs to be recorded for future use and then whenever we are going to record it of course we have to report it different uh, reasons are there the reasons for investigating the incidents still participants have to come already we joined late guys <clears throat> Okay, well, guys, we are going to learn why do we have to investigate, record, and report the incident in the same way. How do we have to investigate, record, and report the incident? So here are some of the reasons which are basically reasons to carry out the investigation. That why do we have to carry out the investigations? First, identify the immediate and root cause. We have to identify the immediate and root causes when we will be having the immediate and root causes then we can prevent the reoccurrence of this incident that this incident can be prevented from reoccurrence okay then <clears throat> we have to collect and record the evidences that who are the evidences we have to collect them what are the evidences over there we have to collect them we have to record them there are some legal reasons for example state law is requiring us to investigate the incident because maybe the same incident or the same scenario could be occurring in different organizations those who are working under the umbrella of aramco they know that in case if some incident occurs on one side of aramco aramco is sending the safety alert to all the contractors why because they know that if or they know that all of our contractors are almost working in the same scenario so the same incident could be occurring over there. So what we have to do, we have to send the report of this incident to all of our contractors, because when we will be sending it to all of our contractors, they will be having the idea that our work is similar to this work and we can have the same incident over there on our job site. So that is why sometime there could be some kind of legal reasons like state law is requiring or sometime your client is requiring you to investigate the incident and to report them so that we can aware the other people regarding this. Then <clears throat> insurance purposes. Insurance company is asking you to investigate the incident to identify the root cause, identify the immediate cause because they have to, because you, they will be claiming, they will be giving you the claim of insurance once they will see the investigation. Maybe it is your intentional fault then they are not going to give you the claim, right? So sometimes insurance companies are asking you to investigate the incident, then staff morale. If I am working in an organization where some incident has occurred and I know that my organization is going to investigate it properly so that a reoccurrence is not going to get, uh, not going to get happen, then I, my, my morale will be up. My morale will be high because I know my organization is caring about me but on the other side if i know that my organization is not going to inv investigate the incident means they don't care about the incident they don't care about the life of people today a minor incident is there tomorrow there would be 
huge incident may be life would be lost in that scenario staff morale is one of the main reason to uh, to investigate the incident then a disciplinary purposes because we have to discipline some people we have to uh, penalize them we have to uh, we have to give them some disciplinary charges should be implementing on some uh, people who are at fault who are at mistake so that is why we for the disciplinary purposes we have to investigate the incident then data gathering very important thing data gathering basically data gathering identifying the root cause collecting the evidences record the evidences are all these because we want to prevent the reoccurrences okay now <clears throat> there are different type of incidents guys remember what is the meaning of incident the meaning of incident is event okay the meaning of incident is event event could be an accident event could be near miss event could be a dangerous occurrence or event could be work related ill health okay work related ill health what does that means means the person got ill health because he was working on the job site and due to some chemical he inhaled he got some bad reaction uh, inside his body so he got ill health okay so this is one of the example now regarding the accident near miss dangerous occurrence work related ill health again telling you remember these are all the different types of incidents what are these let us have a discussion about first one accident accident is basically any unwanted unplanned unforeseen unexpected sequence of event which lead to injury damage or loss whenever these unwanted unexpected unplanned sequence of event join together and there is a chance of some kind of injury damage or loss we call it accident there are two kinds of accidents what are those two kinds one of them is injury accident what is injury accident if any unwanted unplanned unexpected sequence of event is resulting in some kind of personal injury for example a, a, a hand injury for example you got some uh, broken bone for example so this is what we call injury accident if someone get burn we will be considering it injury accident okay then damage only accident the same scenario occurs the same scenario happens but a human is not having any effect but the premises or the area they got some kind of damage for example as it is mentioned a wall is demolished so this is damage only accident accident is unwanted unplanned unforeseen unexpected sequence of events this is accident and with the accident we can have damage only accident if only some things some things can get damage and we call it injury accident in case if we get any kind of personal injury next is near miss the same scenario is happening unwanted unplanned unforeseen unexpected sequence of event but nothing happens okay this is what we call near miss although it had the potential to cause harm but nothing happens we call it near miss for example if someone is working at height he is carrying the tools in his pocket i will be explaining it over here and
कंसिडर दैट सम वन इज वर्किंग एट हाइट ओके एंड ही इज कैरिंग सम काइंड ऑफ टूल फॉर एग्जाम्पल a hammer in his pocket one guy who is standing down there holding the ladder for example okay if the tool falls down okay and it breaks something whatever maybe a table your laptop if the laptop is broken this is what we call damage only accident in case if it falls on your head and you get head injury this is what we call injury accident in case the same tool falls down on the ground on the ground and nothing happens this is what we call near miss okay so these are the definition of damage only uh, injury accident and near miss okay moving further there is something which we call dangerous occurrence dangerous occurrence is basically a specified event that has to be reported to the relevant authority by state law it is the requirement of the law that you have to report that event to uh, the relevant authority whoever the authority is for example a gas leakage what does that mean <coughs> consider that you are working in a plant okay this white sheet is your plant okay and there is some processing unit that processing unit we are saying oil and gas any or oil or gas processing unit okay a dangerous gas leaks out for example h2s leaks out if it leaks out it will be expanding let's say with the flow of the wind in case if no one is there let's say no one is there this is your accommodation or this is your office no one is there okay but it had been detected by sensors sensors detected it okay this is what we call dangerous occurrence now there is something i want to explain a little bit more what is that guys consider that people are working here and this gas leaks out and it reaches to them okay we have one man down this is what we call injury accident okay now second scenario we were having the people here but we were having some sensors installed over here which already informed us okay so before the gas reached to us before the gas reached to us we ran outside okay or we had worn our scbas for example okay this is it had the potential to cause harm 
but nothing happened because the gas leaked out or let's say there is an emergency stop button i press the button okay and the source is closed now no more gas leaks out because i was present over there as the gas detected immediately the source is closed it had the potential to cause harm but nothing happens this is what we call near miss guys remember gas was leaked out although we controlled it but because if this gas will be moving in different direction in different areas it can cause damage it is having the high potential to cause harm and we must report this near miss to the legal authorities then this near miss will become the dangerous occurrence so that is why you would have seen you would have heard the definition of dangerous occurrence as as a high potential near miss is called dangerous occurrence yes a high potential near miss is called dangerous occurrence if this is clear please let me know i'll be proceeding further okay now next is level of investigation when we have to investigate the any incident how do we investigate there are different level of investigation based on the level of investigation we are involving the people or the workers or the employees or the senior management for example minimum minimal level of investigation is required in which immediate line manager and not excessive time or effort is required for example scratch due to hot surface of machine in case if i am coming here and there is a hot area hot surface of the machine my hand got touch and just a small scratch comes up on my my hand this is a minimum level of investigation is required that, that why it is happening maybe your line manager as it is mentioned over here but usually line manager does not come over there you yourself or the supervisor or the foreman or the safety officers or supervisors maximum they are usually investigating this kind of incident the next is a machine hit the barrier okay machine which hit the barrier or the barricade then line manager may be with some support and more time and effort is involved maybe line manager come and in this way he would be involving one or two persons and of course more investigation more time and effort is involved in this kind of incident in case if we are having any kind of first aid injury then middle manager by the way over here the meaning of line manager you can consider your engineers okay or your uh, safety coordinators you can say uh, then medium middle manager with support and significant time and effort for example first aid injury in case or usually whenever we are having the first aid injury here in the scenario is that your manager comes and he usually investigated okay this is the medium we call it the medium level of investigation in case if we are having medical treatment case or any kind of lti where the person does not just get the first aid first aid injury is i was doing some job and uh, my hand come uh like you can say between the moving parts of the machine and by the way before it get pinched i pulled it out somehow i got injury i will go to the clinic and they will be just giving me the first aid minor first aid is required and i can come back to the job in the medical treatment case what happens the person cannot be treated locally in the premises using the or in the clinic of your project site then he has to go to the hospital and he would be admitting over there we have to register him in the hospital we call it medical treatment case that the case has to be treated in the hospital so in that scenario high level of investigation is required and usually senior management is, comes up and they are basically investigating the incident and uh, everything is clear over here Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now there is a group exercise. Yes, Fizan. Fizan, आपने कुछ you wanted to ask something? 
Faizan or Abdullah Hassan. Someone raised his hand. I, okay, fine. Now, uh, there is a message. Unable to unmute. Okay, sorry, guys. Just hold on. Allow participants. Yes. Now, please. Yeah, thank you, sir. No problem. Yes, Faizan. Any question? Okay, this was just unmute. Okay, fine. Uh, now, we are proceeding further. Okay. Everyone will mention in the chat maybe five or six words maximum. What you will do first when you are going to arrive at the site where accident was just happened or incident was just happened? Everyone, please mention it, mention it in the chat. Ambulance, okay. First aid kit. Fire alarm, okay. For example, if there is fire, yes, first aid, okay. Safety of the scene, very nice, Abdullah. Inspection, nurse inspection, okay. Observe the situation first, good. Emergency, good. Who is remaining? Shall I call the name or level of accident we have to investigate? Yes, first aider, very nice. Mr. Omar, you have mentioned four or five, very nice. Inform to rescue team, record, okay. You might be having the same answer, but you must be mentioning it, root causes, first aid. Casualty care, informed emergency team. Only I, I can see the names started repeating. Some of the guys, they are not taking part. Incident report, okay. I'm, I'm going to call the names now, then you will start mentioning who is on Muhammad's iPhone. Zeng Feng, you have mentioned. SK Abdul Qadir. Shah Nawaz, I guess you have mentioned. Shahid Afridi. Watch out the hazard. Rescue the person. Report. Very nice. Shahid Afridi has mentioned. Okay. Ramesh, did you mention something? Pradeep. Pradeep reported. Okay. Mr. Omar, all the time mentioning. Noor Muhammad mentioning something. Okay, Muhammad Adnan, Suhail Akhtar, Javed Iqbal. First, identify the emergency, call to ambulance. Okay, concerned person. Okay, very nice. So you have head count. Okay, very nice. So you guys have mentioned a lot of things over here. Very nice. Let us see what is the first thing you will be, you will be coming and you'll be Assembly point, okay. You will have to identify, guys, the first important thing is about the safety of the scene. Whenever there is any accident, you have to ask yourself, can I reach there? Should I go there? There could be some kind of danger. What kind of dangers could be there? Dangerous gas leaks out. There is a wet floor and the person is electrocuted. Okay, there could be traffic. What else? Come on, start mentioning in the chat. Due to the gases, uh, employee is not able to come up from the confined space due to gas. Due to gases, yes, you cannot rescue the person in the smoke or fire. Very nice. Or the person fall down from the height. Person fall down, but fall, falling down person is not hazardous for me because I can reach over there and I can rescue him. I can go to the person, right? The danger is on a person, um, person is, maybe fall in that location where we can't go. Or... Where we cannot go, okay, in that scenario. Yes, okay, fire incident, very nice. Okay, guys, so first of all, what we have to do, we have to check 
if the area is safe to approach or no in case if any danger is over there for example some kind of uh, fallen person can rescue okay hospital okay then for example in case if there is some kind of snake or scorpion confined space uh, there is a chance of electric short circuit traffic or there is uh, there could be fire then we are not going to go over there first important thing is safety of the scene if the scene is safe then i will go i will approach to the person and i will i will try to secure the area okay then is immediate action needed to eliminate the danger before casualties are approached maybe we have to eliminate the danger perhaps i have to shut down the power before i approach over there perhaps i have to close the valve uh maybe the process uh, the wall for the pl- process plant so that gas leaks out should be stopped okay so in that way I- immediate action may be required and you have to take that second important thing as everyone mentioned first aid treatment hospitalization you also consider the bystanders they may be in the shock ask them to sit down stay relax because these bystanders are very important for us why we will see in the slides further first important yes. thing when we talk about the basic investigation procedure first important thing scenes of the safety uh, sorry safety of the scene you have to secure the scene first you secure the scene you identify who is over there now the investigation is going to start first important thing gather factual information second analyze the information and draw con- conclusions third identify suitable control measures and fourth plan the remedial actions what are these first thing come first gathering the information immediately start gathering the information for that purpose first thing secure the scene use some kind of warning tape or barricade ask everyone to move back secure the scene identify the witness because these witnesses the people bystanders who might be in the shock these are very important for us because they will be informing us about the facts of the incident then collect the factual information try to identify try to collect the things take pictures okay then interview the witness you can also make some kind of sketch of the area immediately if you are ha- if you reach over there sketch would be just like this entry point entry point is for example these this is the premises this is the entry point okay and we got one man down over here okay and um, the load was fallen over here crane is parked over here means you can just make us rough sketch over there that would be giving you, for later use you will be having a memory regarding this okay next is interview the witnesses examine documents what kind of documents do ha- do we have to examine regarding security of the scene everyone is very clear about that identify the witness we can identify them very easily collect the factual information sketches okay very easy interview the witness how we are going to interview the witness first important important thing call them in a separate room the room should be quiet no distraction should be there even we used to say there should not be any window so that the interviewee when you are taking his interview he should start watching outside and he would lose his memory by watching outside we don't want that no distraction should be there establish a rapport make a relationship between him okay and then be get some something personal okay explain the purpose that why we are going to have this in- investigation we are not going to blame you or blame him blame him tell him that the purpose of this investigation is to prevent the reoccurrence okay next use open ended question who what where when why how you don't have to give him a chance so that he can answer in two words yes or no no we don't have to ask such questions we have to ask such questions 
where were you at that uh, where were you at that time so that he should be explaining what you were doing over there okay if you say you are the one who uh, who is rigor so he will say yes i am rigor if you say what you were doing there then he will be explaining yes i i am the rigor i am we can take statement from supervisor also after the interview of the witness we will come to that point later on is done okay so we have to ask him open ended questions okay then keep an open mind you don't have to decide immediately once you are talking to him or while you are talking to him he is telling you something don't start deciding something don't start processing the information just listen start writing take your notes make the notes as many as you you can make then ask him for written statement he will be giving you the written statement maybe he will tell you that i don't know english so i cannot write in english ask him to write report in for example hindi for example arabic for example urdu maybe he will say i don't know how to write arabic i don't know how to write hindi then you will be asking someone from your trusted side you you will be asking him to come and to take his statement he will be taking the statement he will be writing the statement and during the statement you don't have to tell him you don't have to give him some kind of signal or you don't have to suggest him write whatever he is speaking then finally once you get the statement thank the witness thank you so much your statement is recorded if you have not written then then just sign or maybe some time thumb impressions are required we get those and then we let them leave next is once you are asking for the written statement there uh, there was one message from adnan that we can take statement from supervisor also after the interview of witness no need maybe supervisor was not there then why do we have to take the witness from the supervisor only the witnesses are required to give their report their statement okay because supervisors they if he is not there he will be manipulating the incident so what we have to do we just have to get the statement from the witness okay next document examination we had while gathering the information we will be securing the scene identifying the witness collecting the factual information interviewing the witness which we just have learned now examine the documents what kind of documents do we have to examine one there is one message company policy do we need to know the company policy yes because company policy will tell me what is the direction we need production or safety what are our set targets do you remember in chapter 2 we discussed that so company policy is required risk assessment is required training records are required that the person who is performing his job he is trained or not most of the time the people who are new they are making the mistake because they are not inducted well usually production what they do they are calling the people maybe rentals and they are just putting them on the job because they want production and in a hurry they make mistake okay next is uh, sorry guys there are some uh, audio recording is not valid for the statement see you cannot go for the audio recording until or unless you don't get the consent of the other person i cannot record your voice until or unless i don't inform you that i am recording you okay or i don't get your permission that i am going to record you clear okay sir next is uh, risk assessments training records induction that the person is inducted or not safe system of work was it uh, sorry what was the work they are going to perform perhaps 
we need the weld uh, in the hot work we need the welding safety as a safe system of work but there is no welding safety procedure made okay then how they are doing the job over there did they get the permit yes or no we need to identify what are the informations mentioned on the permit maybe the permit was already expired and they are doing the job then maintenance record maybe we need to get the maintenance record of that particular machine previous accident reports may be required sickness and absence records may also be required perhaps the person who was performing the job he would have taken some kind of drug because he he is having some kind of diabetes or some other thing so he he is the person who usually takes the drug and he he comes to the job site okay so we need to check if he was sick if he is taking some kind of medicines so if he is the person who uses the medicine who allowed him to perform the job we need to identify these thing we will be taking we will be examining examining all these documents next analyzing the information once we collected the data this is the time we are going to analyze the information okay how we will be analyzing the information first of all we will be identifying immediate causes of the accidents what were the unsafe acts what were the unsafe conditions these are the or these come in the immediate causes of the accident then once you identify the immediate causes then you go to identify the root causes different methodologies are being used to identify the root cause for that purpose you must be trained to identify the root causes a root cause um training is required so that you you know that if i am going to choose a scheme of five wires or fishbone or fall tree or cause and effect analysis whatever so you have to identify the root cause based on the surface causes then in the root cause you will be identifying what are the reasons behind the immediate causes what are the surface cause under the surface cause we are having root causes for example if we try to identify the root cause or based on the average root causes we have identified usually no supervision no ppe provided no training conducted no maintenance no checking or inspection inadequate or no risk assessment these are some of the main root causes which usually are the outcomes when we start investigating the incidents and all these are basically related to the management system for example the person was not trained while he was sent to the job site who sent him to the job site before or uh, yeah without getting the training okay so we need to identify all these things and then we move further and uh, first we will be identifying the over here we were analyzing the data we were identifying immediate and root causes once we identify immediate and root causes then we are going to give some kind of suggestions about the scenario that now we uh, we had this incident these are the root causes and now we are going to suggest some control measures over there what are those we will learn them but now there is a there is a group exercise a group exercise says a worker is struck by a load being carried on a pallet by forklift just like a kind as you can see in this picture outline the possible immediate underlying underlying causes of the accident what are the possible causes of uh, what are the possible um, surface causes and root causes let us start discussing these root surface and root causes possible immediate causes are failure to secure the pallet the pallet was not secured this is see again in the immediate causes you will be identifying unsafe acts or unsafe conditions okay so this is unsafe act or condition what is that failure to secure the pallet unsafe act unsafe act then poor positioning of the truck close to the pedestrian exit actor condition because forklift oh, yeah because forklift is in your control okay so on safe act aggressive braking by the driver what is that 
सिंपल so unsafe act is the major reason usually okay next is possible underlying root causes what are what do you think what are the possible root causes no training for the driver driver was not trained lack of segregation of vehicle and pedestrian areas are not segregated man machine interface is very common poor driver induction driver was not inducted poor truck maintenance truck forklift truck was not maintained properly and that is why the load was slipped and hit the person no refresher training they were trained but they their training was not refreshed and usually what happens when we are going to get the refresher training we say only 15 minutes of training is required alas right someone mentioned chat poor visibility and not having valid third party certificate yes nice next is identifying suitable control measures we gathered the fact we analyzed the data now we took an example of identifying root and uh, immediate surface causes and root causes yes janavas sir in this uh, previous uh, points the last one the inattentive pedestrian steps so can you me again sorry in attentive pedestrian steps previous slide in attentive pedestrian i am the pedestrian steps. okay i am the pedestrian i am physically present over here but mentally i am somewhere else okay i am not attentive okay. to the job side okay okay yes sir okay next is uh, over here first we analyze, first we gather the data then we analyze the data in the analyzation of the data we just have or in the analysis of the data we just have uh, taken one example now we are going to identify suitable control measures control measures need to be defined for both unsafe act or uh, sorry uh, surface causes and root causes what are those for example if the fork forklift got spill remember we are just taking we are just saying it for example clean up the spill replace the missing guard relocate the trailing cable these are some of the examples which are or which can be identified which can be fixed immediately on the job site then for root causes sometime root causes are hard to identify if you don't have proper training or you don't have proper trail of the accident once you identify the root cause then you have to identify the suitable control measures and not easy to implement the suitable control measures for the root cause because what is the reason because root causes are usually leading us to the management system what kind of management system by the way your health and safety management system okay then you will go and you have to make changes in health and safety management system okay so then you will be fixing the issue and then you are going to plan the remedial action so that uh, we can fix the whole scenario dangerous conditions must be dealt immediately interim actions may be possible immediate actions may be possible you are removing the cables from there or you are cleaning up the area for example then underlying causes will require more complex actions yes of course as we just have discussed it will be taking time effort disruption of the job and money of course whenever time is there money will be there and need for prioritization you have to prioritize the the causes you have to prioritize the actions okay with time scale 
with priority and who is the responsible person. For example, a recommended action is given that introduce induction training for all new drivers. Priority is minimum, medium because this is for new drivers. Okay, time scale is one month and who is responsible? Warehouse manager. In case if we are having old drivers, then priority is, will be high because they are already work, working over there. And time scale, we might have to reduce the time scale, maybe within one week. If you are having 100 drivers over there, one week is more than enough because now the priority is high. Okay. Now, over here, what we are going to do, we are going to record and report the incident. What are the requirements? Reporting is the process of informing people that an incident has occurred. I gave you the example of Aramco that once the incident occurred over there, they are asking the contractor to investigate. They are finding out the root causes, immediate causes, root causes, and they are sticking it on, they are pasting it on one, uh, one of their sheet. You can say the fact sheet or the circular, and they are circulating it among all the other contractors. Okay, so reporting is basically in, informing people that an incident has occurred. It can be internally within the organization or externally to the enforcing authorities or insurers. Both possibilities are there. The recording is the process of recording is the process of documenting the event. Recording is the process of documenting the event. Okay, and. Uh, In the recording, what you are doing, you are documenting whatever you have uh, you have investigated. You have to put it in the record. Okay, uh, there is a group exercise. The group exercise is all about what do you think? What kind of what sort of things are likely to hinder good accident and near miss reporting? What do you think, guys? Why? why people they don't uh, like to report or why there is always a delay in the reporting regarding accident or near miss come on everyone mention or Ma if you want to speak up please Ma management penalization uh, come again please management penalization ah, penalty very nice okay yes Management penalization, very nice. Okay. In insecurity in jobs. <laughs> yeah. Main reason, right? Yes. The reputation of the organization. Yes. Come on, someone else. You are a worker and you see one incident or near miss and you don't want to report. Why? Excessive paperwork. Excessive no, paperwork. No, Very no. nice. Shanwas could not hear you. No, still it's Police case. Very nice. Radeep mentioned police case. Yes. Shanwas, I could not hear you properly. Blame culture. Blame culture, very nice. Because worker gets scared. Yes. yes. Okay, property damage. Yes. Uh, lack of the trust and uh, lack of lack the trust. Okay. And lack of uh, motivation. Lack of motivation. Very nice. Very nice. Yes. These are some of the reasons that people, they don't like to report. Very important thing as uh, I guess Mr. Ramesh has mentioned that job insecurity, lack of trust and uh, blame culture. That in case if I will be doing it, I will be blamed. Okay, that you are, and of course, a lot of investigation would be there and I would be the part of all the investigations. Right, and maybe everything will be putting back, will be put back to me. Huh? So these are some of the reasons. These are basically the barriers to report. 
that unclear organizational policy sometime you don't have a clear organization policy there is one lack of knowledge not taking immediate action yes these are also then unclear organization policy you don't have clear organizational policy regarding the reporting that in case if you have to report how you will be reporting no reporting system in place this is what i just have said overly complicated reporting procedure someone has mentioned that too many too much paperwork and by the way it happened with me one time when i was the one who was preparing a report believe me one time i thought i don't have to i, I don't have to prepare the report because extra things were asked over there so that is why overly complicated reporting procedure discourage the people then excessive paperwork yes takes too much time blame culture apathy don't no sense people they don't have any kind of uh, willingness that in case if there is any incident do i have to report yes no khali wali no problem i will not report then lack lack of training on policy and procedures yes okay if people are not trained then on policies and procedures yes they will not be reporting okay and someone has mentioned i guess adnan has mentioned provide proper training no provide proper training will be once we identify why people are not reporting then we say provide proper training but lack of training yes this is one of the reasons okay next internal incident reporting if you are the one who would be making making the inter, uh, incident report internally there are some factors which will come and which will be affecting your report what are those let's say internally your director senior manager human resource manager health and safety environmental advisor worker representatives they will come these factors will be coming and they will be impacting on your report whatever the report you are going to make externally family of the casualty external authorities insurance companies public relation advisors they will be impacting on your impact could be positive impact could be negative remember maybe with the insurance company you don't want to report because if you will be reporting if you will not be hiding the facts then you will be blamed okay so in in these scenarios negative or positive the severity gets changed up and down now in case if we have to report if we have to record the accident there should be one accident register okay accident register could be just like a kind of excel sheet okay accident register could be a physical register where you are going to register all the accident what are the minimum standard which are required to be registered or reg logged in over there in your register book or in your accident book name and address of the casualty date and time of the accident location of the accident details of injury details of treatment given description of the event causing injury details of any equipment or substance involved witness names contact details detail of persons complete uh, completing the record signatures over here with this data you can make your own format using this slide you can make your format that in you have you are the one who have to prepare a register for the accident log book that whatever the accident would be there we are going to log in over here we are going to register it over here so they using this data these are the headings and you can make your own accident log book next is externally reported event some incident need to be reported to regulator by the law for example fatality major injury dangerous occurrence in case if there is some kind of disease for example covid lost time injuries we must report these kind of injuries these kind of accidents these, these kind of incidents to state law uh, you can say to our regulator whoever would be our regulator to the enforcement authority for example clear guys till now what we have discussed if there is any question please ask me no okay now we are going to study the audit by the way the one slide is 
up down the audit we are going to discuss the audit what is an audit okay audit is basically a systematic step by step objective target oriented and critical point to point evaluation of an organization's health and safety management system whenever we are going to go for the audit we use a systematic approach which is having one set target that we are going to improve our health and safety culture then our our health and safe uh, we are going to improve our health and safety uh, management system and then critical we are going to check all the points of your health and safety management system this is what is the meaning of auditing what is the difference between audit and an inspection easy words easy words audit is basically just audit just check uh, sorry inspection just check one activity one equipment one plant okay audit is about whole system okay audit checks the whole system and inspection just checks one activity one plant one equipment what are the differences let us start linking them over here inspection it checks the workplace audit also checks the workplace okay inspection checks the record in the audit there would be also checks the record there would be audit also checks the record i forget where did i mention that audit also checks the record usually quick lower cost uh, inspection is usually quick audit takes time okay can be a long process yeah over here uh, inspection checks the record and audit examines the document okay these are linked in this way lower cost usually expensive and then inspection may only require basic competence but audit it requires high level of competence inspection is basically part of an audit and audit is basically the examine of the whole system it examines the procedure interview the workers verifies the standard and if you look into the definition of these two over here it looks the physical reality of the workplace it looks at the management system that lies behind this what is the management system behind this activity we are going to evaluate it critically point to point audit is basically a big entity inspection is the part of an audit and this inspection is basically as i have mentioned is done based on activity to activity equipment to equipment for example i hope so this is clear now any question guys no sir okay pre audit preparation Con now consider yourself you are working as an auditor okay what you and you are going to audit someone some area some system whatever now what kind of preparation you will be making this is what we call pre audit preparation the following should be defined you are going to define the time scale scope of the audit i mean up to what degree what we are going to include your workshop or the whole area for example you have to define about the uh, scope of the audit area and extent of the audit up to what degree we are going to investigate or uh, what uh, up to what degree we are going to audit who will be required the responsible persons that you need once you will be working there as an auditor then what documentation you are going to check over there and these are the pre audit preparation you have to define about all these things when you define about all these things then you go and you start auditing during the audit we are having basically three phases of audit what are these three phases of audit auditor use three methods or three uh, audit could be done in three phases one is paperwork you check the documents and records interviews 
managers and workers are going to be interview that what is this a b c d you are going to ask them about for example if the training has been mentioned you are going to ask them if they are trained or not then observation workplace equipment activities and behavior you will be observing the area by yourself so paperwork interviews and physical observation by yourself these are the three phases of an audit now during the audit you are going to examine some paperwork okay what are the paperwork by the way you can make your checklist from this slide okay what that what if i am the one who is going to audit the health and safety management system of some organization what do i have to check health and safety policy health and safety policy risk assessment and safe work of uh, safe system of work training records minutes of safety committee meetings maintenance records and details of failures records of health and safety monitoring activities for example tours inspection surveys accident investigation reports and data including near miss information emergency arrangements inspection reports from insurance companies output from regulator visits for example visit reports enforcement actions record of worker complaints these are some of the documents you are going to check once you check all these documents then you will go you will take the interviews of the people then you will go in the field practically observing the people about their behavior that whatever is mentioned over here people are behaving in the same way or not then your audit is done this is the time what you will do you will be holding usually to hold a close out meeting you will be holding a close out meeting then you will be giving a written report to the responsible person it is the responsibility of the management at all level to ensure recommendation for improvement are communicated and implemented once you will be giving the report to someone for example to me now it is my responsibility to communicate it to all the people okay so that we can implement whatever we have not implemented yet but it was mentioned in our system basically what the auditor do he will be opening the system the health and safety management system he will be asking you you have mentioned this in your system show me you are doing it or not if you are doing it he will keep it he will take one evidence from you if you are not doing it he will be giving you non conformity report ncr this is simple thing now audit may be necessary for certification for example iso 45001 now there are some advantages and disadvantages of an external and internal audit what are the advantages what are the disadvantages if you talk about external advantage uh, sorry external audit what are the advantage and disadvantage then we will be going for the internal audits sorry uh, external audits in these are basically if the auditor comes from outside of course he would be independent of any internal influence yes no one can ask him to go fast not to sit over here don't examine this document don't do this a b c he will ask you everything whatever he is required then he would be having a fresh pair of eyes to check your system may have a wider experience of different type of workplace because he is coming from outside means that he is already having experience of different type of workplaces so maybe he would be giving us a better suggestions uh, as compared to the internal audit then a recommendation after often carry more weight yes whatever he would be suggesting you your management would like to follow that okay but on the other side what are the disadvantages expensive money time consuming will take time will check each and everything okay may not understand the business so make impractical suggestion he would not maybe he doesn't understand the business and he would give you some kind of suggestion which you cannot implement over there for example he 
would be the auditor of the operation side and he is doing the audit of the construction a running plant and a constructor and a plant in construction so he may give you suggestion from crossway those might be impractical for example he can say to the he can suggest that uh, for the construction plant you don't need to get the permits for all the activities that is not possible right in this way then may intimidate threaten the workers so get incomplete evidence maybe once he comes to you for the interview maybe you would be getting threatened that uh, if he will be asking me something and i will be responding to him he would be telling to senior management that i am the one who told him so maybe the people would try to hide things from him and uh, he would not be able to get the clear and factual facts then uh, regarding the internal audit internal auditor what are the advantages what are the disadvantages and uh, advantages are he would be less expensive auditor may already know the business so no what can be realistically achieved so he knows already that what my management is going to provide me so he would be mentioning only those things in the audit okay it improves ownership of the issues found yes if i will be the one who would be doing it i would be taking some responsibility okay that yes this is my organization and uh, i have to do something for it then build competence internally once we do once we perform the audit internally of course people will be having some some targets to achieve that would be increasing the competency and then of course that would be improving our health and safety culture regarding the disadvantages auditor may not notice certain issues of course he would be he he doesn't like to watch the things which he doesn't have to simple auditors may not have good knowledge of industry or legal standard if he is working internally then yes it is possible and auditors may not possesses auditing skills so may need a training sometimes training is required most of the time what the organization do they are calling the external auditor they are asking them just to train the employees over there and internal auditors they are going to audit their organization yes training is required auditors are not independent so may be subject to internal influence yes and my time sheet is in the hand of abc person if i do if i suggest something what about me right so yes internal influence would be there this is the disadvantage so guys this was a, it was our topic uh, our module uh, 4.3 that was about audit in audit what did we discuss we discussed that audit is a systematic objective and critical evaluation of the whole system then we discussed the difference between inspection and audit inspection is only activity to activity audit is about the whole system here we discussed about when you are going to perform uh the audit or if you are going to work as an auditor what are the preparation during the audit what you do what are the documents you are going to check okay and after having the audit you will be having a meeting you will be right uh, you will be making a report and submitting it so that actions can be taken and here we discuss the advantages and disadvantages of internal and external audits now a very short topic is remaining over here and that is about reviewing health and safety performance once you do the audit what you have to do you have to review your health and safety performance with the audit you will be having the ncrs that where we are lacking if we are having leading uh, if you are leading or if we are lagging by the way i sent you one uh, one picture in the group which shows lagging and leading indicator did anyone notice did anyone see that anyone studied about the about those no till now no i i don't think so because we are we were having very short breaks tomorrow i i want you guys to have a look over there and that would be helpful for you especially once you will be solving the exam by the way okay over here in the after the audit we need to have a regular reviews uh review should be from full management system review uh, sometime full management comes and they are going to see the whole system okay they want to have the 
uh, you know uh, radar view of the whole system that and this is usually done by the board uh, and annually they are doing it and then the next is management team review for example quarterly feeds to full review basically this is the full management system review this is the management team review and then departmental review comes over here departmental review is basically individual reviews and that would be going to feed back to the management team review management team review is going to feed back to the full management system in this way the management regular reviews are going to be done or being conducted departmental review monthly by line manager to ensure on uh, you are on track assessing opportunities for improvement and the need for change this is only about the review basically what is the purpose of regular review what do you think what is the purpose of regular review something we set in our policy what was that target guys are you with me sir so, only abdullah yes we are yes. okay great yes sir yes sir. okay okay yes, sir, yes, sir. okay so <clears throat> what is the purpose of regular review reviewing performance is an essential part of any health and safety management system we in the policy we set some target here we are going to check that if we are on target if not why not what do we have to change what do we have to change what are our indicators okay for example it says aim to reduce last time accidents by 5% this was our aim target target has been met if the target is met what we are going to do we are going to set a new target for another 5% for the next year okay this is just our aim means what we are going to do we are going to check our target okay what is our target if we have met okay improve it if not remove the gap reach to the target only 5 more minutes mr omar or if he is left 5 more minutes now guys what are the issues you are going to consider in the what are the issues you are going to consider in the reviews legal compliance are we legally compliant with the legal standard given by government accident and incident data we had 10 accidents last week sorry last year this year we said that we will not be having any yes or no we will be getting the answer inspection surveys tours and sampling we will review them absence and sick sickness data we will review audit reports we will review achievement of objectives if yes we will review enforcement action whatever the enforcement actions were implemented on us did, did we take did we implement them as it is or still we need some more improvement then what about previous management reviews previous management did they give us some review yes or no if their reviews were there what were their reviews maybe we find something for us beneficial then legal and best practice development in case if we are on target then what more we can achieve then what do we get from the reviews what are the output what are the outcomes of the reviews first of all record of the records of the reviews should be retained you have to re retain them okay then demonstrate compliance with management of health and safety at work regulations whatever your regulations are it will be demonstrating if you are if you are meeting it means that you are meeting your requirements then results may have to be reported to shareholders or to the stakeholders to the insurance company to the clients a b c d whoever are our shareholder we may have to share the results with them then the aim of the review is continual improvement if we are achieved we have to improve ourselves senior managers review performance and set target for the organization top management they are setting target for the organization middle managers they are reviewing the performance and they are setting the targets for their 
departments okay and then junior managers they are reviewing local performance and set target for their local areas in this way local areas targets once they are met they are going to feed back to their middle manager once it is met then senior manager senior management is going to be feed it back so these are the ways in which we are basically performing our re reviews and we are feeding our senior management back so in this topic uh, what did we do basically we reviewed our health and safety policy just to make sure if we are on target or not clear guys i hope so today's session was long by the way i hope so everything would have been well understood yes sir any question no okay just a quick review just a quick review only 2 to 3 minutes if someone wants to leave we can leave i i would be just giving you the continuity of the whole element element 4 in which we had to discuss health and safety monitoring and measurement and what did we discuss first we discussed active and reactive monitoring in the active monitoring what did we discuss we discussed about the risk assessment trainings meetings and inspections different types of inspections safety inspections safety sampling safety tours and what do we check in the inspection plant premises people and procedure and for the inspection what kind of arrangements do we have to do we have to made and there is one example of the inspection after that we move to the arrangement for the workplace inspection what kind of topic do we have to include or what kind of areas do we have to inspect and over here i had given you one assignment next in the reactive monitoring we learned about accident ill health uh, that what what are the in case if we are having accident or ill health then we are collecting the data and uh, data collection is all about accidents dangerous occurrences near miss ill health where we are having some kind of trends and patterns which are telling us about the injury rates or incident rates and here we learned that how we are going to calculate the injury rate after that and this was the reactive monitoring that once the accident has happened now what we have to do next is uh, in the next module we learned how we are going to investigate record and report the incident here we learned some of the reasons for the incident investigation then we learned the different definitions of accident near miss dangerous occurrence and work related ill health remember all these are the types of incident the word incident explains the or the meaning of incident is event and uh, here we learned what level of investigation is required for what kind of incident then we learned the basic investigation procedure started from the safety of the scene then the casualty care gathering the factual information analyzing the information and draw con uh, conclusions then we identify the control measures and plan the remedial action in the gathering information we learned how we are going to interview the witness and what kind of documents we are going to examine in analyzing the information we learned that we are going to identify the immediate causes and root causes and based on these two causes we had one example as well as we are going to identify the suitable control measures for immediate causes or for underlying or root causes both kind of causes needs to be controlled and control measures should have been taken as earlier as possible based on this we are going to define the remedial action what action is required in which we are going to prioritize it we are going to mention the time scale and who is responsible to fulfill uh, or to take this action and then we are going to record and report the incident what is the reason because we want to broadcast the incident and uh, different reporting uh, different barriers are there in the inter, in the reporting system what are those barriers okay like unclear organizational policy no reporting blame culture abc these were the barriers in the internal reporting 
and the internal reporting is having the effect of internal parties as well as the external parties and sometimes we have to report the incident externally to the legal or enforcement authorities like fatality major injury dangerous occurrence disease and lost time injuries also we need to maintain the accident book in which the list of these factors could have been included then we discuss the auditing which is the systematic uh, a target oriented and a point by point critical evaluation of the whole health and safety management system where we learned the difference between inspection which is the part of audit we learned the difference between inspection and audit inspection is the part of an audit and audit is a systematic review of the whole management system then we move to the pre audit preparation that as an auditor what things do i have to prepare before i am going to perform the audit in the audit i'll be doing i'll be checking the paperwork i'll be taking the interviews i'll be going for the physical observation in the field as an auditor what kind of documents do i have to check listed out over here and at the end of our, an audit i'll be conducting a meeting i'll be uh, i'll be giving a report to the management so that management can implement the or take the necessary action about the observation then we discussed about the advantages and disadvantages of external as well as the internal audits after that we learned how or why do we need to review our health and safety performance and when do we need to review our health and safety performance and who reviews it starting starting from the top management who reviews it annually then management team review and then departmental review and what do we check what is the main purpose just one purpose are we on target if yes okay how can we improve it if not then what needs to be improved and what are the issues which can be considered in the reviews these are the issues which are listed over here and what output we get basically if we review it we properly implement it we basically improve our health and safety management system so this was the summary of the whole lesson i hope so it would have been well understood and there would not be any question in case if there is any question please ask me otherwise we can end it up now considering there is no question so let let us end up now already we are at no, 952 thank you burkan already we are at 952 so see you guys tomorrow and inshallah tomorrow we will be starting our book 2 goodbye guys allah hafiz assalamu alaikum allah hafiz wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh